What's going on guys? My name is Dustin and this is End on a Make and today I just wanted to hop on really quick and talk a little bit about um, the ankle sprain that LeBron James suffered and what it might mean going forward for the Lakers. Um, really quick I'll just go into LeBron um, as, as for him what it means. I mean obviously it means he's going to be out an extended period of time but you know it's a really like foreign concept. I was looking it up before I hopped on here, and, and the fewest number of games that LeBron's played in a season so far uh, in his career is 55. He played his first year in L.A., uh, where he had, you know, the team missed the playoffs. He had that lingering injury, or I think they said it was like a foot or something, but it was kind of suspect. It was kind of like, oh, well, they're not making the playoffs anyways. But that's the fewest he's played. Um, he's been so consistent and so durable despite, you know, such as – such a physical style of play that to see him actually finally be seriously injured was you know it was a shock especially because we've seen him you know get rolled up on by people before we've seen him go down and get up and kind of walk it off so that's what I thought it was I didn't even really think like oh I bet he's really hurt here he stayed in the game hit a three to extend his uh his double-digit scoring game streak uh, that I think is past like 1,028 now at this point for his career, and then left, and pretty quick, they were like, yeah, he's not coming back. Um, so now he's out indefinitely, uh, joins Anthony Davis on the shelf for the Lakers, and I'm guessing that's probably the last time we'll see him until like maybe a week or two left in the regular season, uh, just because the Lakers, you know, I think in the long run they don't really care what seed they are or who they play in the playoffs. Um, I think it's for them. It's all about getting healthy. I mean, we saw what the two of them can do as a duo. So, you know, making sure they're healthy for like the stretch run in the playoffs is really what matters. So I don't think we'll see him for, I don't know, at least another month or so until we start to wind the regular season down, which is a bummer because, you know, he was talking about how he was, Wanting the MVP, he was, you know, he was campaigning a little bit for it. Not a little bit, he was campaigning a lot. But he really was like, I should have more. This And, you know, say what you will about that, but he's playing at a pretty high level considering, you know, he was playing without AD year 18 and he's still putting up insane numbers. Um, still, you know, dominating the game pretty much no matter who they're playing. Uh, but, but on the Lakers side of things, this is, I think, going to be a little trickier. I mean, obviously, you go from having two top five, top ten, depending on how you think about AD, uh, top ten players in the league, to now, you know, they're going to have to completely change that, that offense around to make it work. I think we'll probably see a lot of Dennis Schroeder, Montrez Harrell pick and rolls. I think you'll see tons of minutes going to dudes like Taylor Horton Tucker and Caruso. Uh, Kuzma, of course, they're going to lean on him like crazy. And it's going to be really interesting to see uh, what Frank Vogel can do. It's going to be different for sure. And obviously the team's not going to have that same defensive prowess that they do when they have LeBron and especially LeBron and AD, of course. But it's going to be a real challenge. And this could be not a, not a blessing in disguise, but it could be a good chance for all the young players to kind of you know, not develop more, but, like, come into their own a little bit more, get a little bit further um, further along, get a little more comfortable with the offense, with, you know, being called upon. And I think that this could lead to um, kind of like an unexpected depth, if you will, where, you know, the, the younger players and role players kind of develop a bit further into those roles, um, which would hopefully be a benefit come playoff time. Um, as for the standings, too, so the Lakers are third right now, the third seed in the West, but they're only two and a half games ahead of sixth place. And going into this this stretch of games without LeBron and AD, I think it's gonna be um, I think it's gonna be tough because really all all that the standings are gonna do is kind of just just make the the path for them to the finals that much harder. Uh, you consider, you know, they go from being a top two seed and playing the bottom half of the conference to potentially having to play, like, the Jazz, the Nuggets, the Suns, the Clippers, like, some combination of those teams. And it's a lot more grueling playing tho those types of teams, you know, four, five, six, seven-game series, depending on, you know, how things go 
and especially you know not knowing what's gonna happen with home court fans so like utah is a tough place to play denver because of all the altitude and everything that's always a tough place to play like i can't imagine that coming off of injuries lebron and anthony davis are like yeah let's go play in denver for a series um so i really think that that's gonna just make things harder not necessarily like oh the sky is falling but definitely harder than it would have been of course had they been able to stay healthy and kind of secure a top two seed um i think that though other than that oh the other the only other thing i wanted to talk about was uh, the buyout market so the lakers have been a huge name whenever a player is rumored to be up for a buyout so blake griffin we saw it where everyone was like oh lakers and then he ended up going to the nets and then you got a couple more guys like andre Drummond, javel mcgee possibly even kevin love cleveland might just get rid of everybody but um depending on the buyout market like i don't think there's anyone that the lakers like can go get to kind of weather this storm a little bit or to bolster their team a little bit because the buyout market seems like it's gonna just be nothing but centers and you know when when anthony davis gets healthy he's gonna eat up a ton of minutes and then you have Montrezl Harrell, you have Marc Gasol, who I know people haven't been super thrilled about his performance so far this year, but he's just so smart that it's tough to take him off of the court. And so I don't see, you know, I don't see any of those players being like a true upgrade that would bolster the needs that the team might have, be it, you know, floor spacing, three point shooting or defense. Um, same thing trade wise, too. I don't think I think probably you know obviously the best trade chip that they have is probably Kuzma, but his deal is so team friendly still, and you know having him under contract like, I don't imagine they're going to be quick to move that like it's a valuable asset unless they think that what they're getting back is a piece that will, absolutely push them over the top of you know for the regular season the playoffs, and going forward, it would just be f such a short sighted move. And that's the type of thing that, you know, we've seen Rob Polinka not do, really. So I don't see them being aggressive with buyouts. I don't, unless there's like a surprise name that just blows everyone's mind. I don't see them being aggressive next week at the trade deadline. I think it's going to just be a lot of testing out this roster, seeing, you know, what combination works, what combinations don't work, who needs more time, who, who works best together. And I think we'll start to see a lot of, you know, a lot of questions get answered about some of these pieces going forward for, you know, the rest of the season and then also going forward for the years to come. Um, but I think that's everything. I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. If you have different thoughts, if you think there's someone out there that I'm just completely missing that the Lakers should absolutely add that will kind of fill that hole. Or if you think, you know, it's no big deal that he's hurt or wh whatever your take is on it. Let me know in the comments. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. We got the trade deadline in about a week. So that'll, that'll be something to watch. Uh, if you watched the whole video, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back soon. Thank you.